Welcome back, Joe Brunswick, insurance broker to the stars. And this was an interesting question posed to me recently. Is HIPAA the only healthcare cybersecurity law? And spoiler alert, not necessarily. So let's go ahead and jump into it. If you are a covered entity or if you're a business associate under HIPAA, you're definitely going to watch this video to the very end. All right, when people think of HIPAA, they really think of one enforcement arm, and that is HHS OCR, which I will just say OCR from here on out. But that is not necessarily true. That information is, say, 11 to 12 years old, depending upon when you watch this video. <clears throat> this is directly from the HIPAA website. Excuse me. And it says the High Tech Act gave state attorneys general the authority to bring civil actions on behalf of state residents for violations of the HIPAA privacy and security rules. The High Tech Act permits state attorney general to obtain damages on behalf of state residents or to enjoin further violations of the HIPAA privacy and security rules. So what does this actually mean in practice? This means that OCR could bring an action against you and state attorney generals could actually pile onto that. We've seen that before. This means that one state attorney general could bring an action against you and other state attorneys general could also pile on and bring actions against you. Would that potentially increase the cost of those regulatory fines and penalties? I, I'd say reasonably that could be the case. Could that also just make the whole process that much more painful when you have to report to X number of people more so than you would have previously? I'd say that's probably a reasonable conclusion there as well. So needless to say, it's not just OCR that can come after you. The state AGs can also come after you. Now, maybe you're saying to yourself, hey, I've never heard of this. What are you talking about? Well, just a quick internet search. These are the states which have actually enforced HIPAA. So it's something that you actually need to be aware of. I would say that it's a reasonable assumption that these state AGs and their, their requisite offices have actually undergone the training that's offered by OCR um, and HIPAA in general. So you don't want to poke that bear. But wait, there's a whole other wrinkle inside of this. This first column here, you'll see these are the states that actually have a reasonable cybersecurity requirement. And reasonable is not necessarily what you think it is. Reasonable is a legal term, and there's various formulations on how you figure that out. If you want to look up a great judge, look up Judge Learned Hand, possibly one of the best names ever. But needless to say, reasonable is a legal definition. And to actually figure out what reasonable means to your business, I am not gonna tell you, I know nothing about your business. I'm not giving legal advice here. I'm not giving insurance advice. But what I am telling you is that reasonable is a lot more complicated than you would probably think it is. I'd say, you know, my best example here is, think of it this way. If you find yourself at the wrong end of a very long table, and at the other end are a bunch of investigators who are trying to hammer you, you need to be able to go down a list of all those common cybersecurity controls, whether that's technical, administrative, or physical safeguards, and you need to rationally and quickly explain to them why certain things were enacted and enforced and why others were not. That's a good place for you to start. So going back to this, these reasonable cybersecurity states, you have these other states here that actually have PHI or some derivation thereof under their definition of PII or protected information. Now, when you bring those two together and you compare and contrast, those are the states where you have both PHI is supposed to be covered information and there's a reasonable cybersecurity requirement. So that means we have a wrinkle here and let's kind of look at an example. Well, under HIPAA, I think the prevailing wisdom is that two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication is not necessarily required under HIPAA. But going back to those states that have PHI and reasonable cybersecurity requirements, let's look at this. Microsoft recently came out and they said that MFA blocks 99.9% .9 of automated attacks. That's multi-factor authentication. Now, would a state attorney general, if they're looking at this, if you had a breach, and they were like, well, we have this cybersecurity requirement in our rule that mandates reasonable cybersecurity. And we know from this recent Microsoft report that 99.9% .9 of those attacks could have been avoided if you just would have implemented multi-factor authentication. It's fairly cheap. It's fairly ubiquitous. What would you have to say to that? Another example I think that's even more common than this is security awareness training. So now I believe 
don't quote me on this, that HIPAA only requires a yearly cybersecurity awareness training program. But security awareness training is fairly ubiquitous. It's fairly, uh, well, I don't want to say cheap is probably not the best word. It's very affordable. So could a state AG come in and say, well, we think it would have been entirely reasonable given the volume of information you have and the fact that we have a reasonable cybersecurity requirement that you should have been conducting, let's say, security awareness training more than once a year, or you should have been implementing two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication inside of your business. They very well could say that. Now, moral of the story here is I am not giving you legal advice. I'm not giving you insurance advice. But what I am saying is if you are, say, a covered entity or a business associate or could be construed as a business associate under HIPAA, maybe you need to consider bringing in a compliance expert or a qualified attorney and actually look at the, the entirety, the totality of breach notification laws you could fall under because just because you fall under HIPAA, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are, um, you know, kind of this like sacred cow, as it were, that no other legal entity can touch. It's not that simple. There are many, many ways that you can get in trouble. And I will say, I, I do talk about something called the uh, regulatory investigation death spiral. And the last thing you want is for a breach to occur. And now all of a sudden you could have various state offices coming after you as well as potentially HHS OCR coming after you. So do your due diligence, reach out or consider reaching out to those qualified experts to really figure out, okay, in the totality of laws that you fall under, what could those potential requirements be? All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking here. If you are as happy as this puppy after watching this video, this is my latest book, Damage Control, Cyber Insurance and Compliance. That is where you can download it for free. If you want to support the cause and keep my wife uh, happy and allowing me to do these videos in my free time, you can also purchase it on Amazon in physical version or Kindle. With that, warn your fruity, warn your fruity, warn your friends, uh, talk to your buddies, uh, consider reaching out to those compliance experts. And with that, stay safe.